What if I told you that life as we know it holds no inherent meaning or purpose? A chilling thought, isn't it? Welcome to the realm of nihilism, a philosophical perspective that questions the very essence of existence. The term nihilism originates from the Latin word nihil, meaning nothing. It represents a belief system that negates the existence of any inherent value, meaning, or purpose in life. Imagine, if you will, being born into a world devoid of any preordained purpose. A world where existence precedes essence, where humans are thrust into life without a manual or a divine mission. This is the premise of existential nihilism, a viewpoint that argues we are born into a meaningless world and must create our own purpose. But it doesn't stop there. What if all the moral values we hold dear, the ethical codes we live by, are devoid of any objective truth? This thought forms the basis of moral nihilism, a philosophy that denies the existence of objective moral values, viewing everything as relative and contingent on individual perspective or social constructs. Now let's take it a step further. What if our pursuit of knowledge is in vain? What if all our beliefs, including those about meaning or purpose, cannot be definitively proven. Welcome to the world of epistemological nihilism, a perspective which questions the possibility of achieving objective knowledge about the world. And finally, imagine looking up at the night sky and realizing our insignificance in the vastness of the universe. This is cosmic nihilism, which focuses on the insignificance of humanity in the grand cosmic scheme. We are but a mere species on a pale blue dot in a cosmos with no inherent purpose. Don't be alarmed. This isn't about fostering despair or fostering a bleak outlook on life. Instead, it's about questioning the established norms, rejecting dogmatic beliefs, and seeking to understand life beyond societal or religious frameworks. A nihilist, you see, is someone who rejects established values and finds no ultimate significance in existence. Nihilism, though seemingly simple, is not a one-size-fits-all philosophy. It manifests in various ways, each with its own emphasis. Let's delve into two of these types, existential nihilism and moral nihilism. At the heart of existential nihilism is the belief that existence precedes essence. This means that we are born into a world devoid of inherent meaning, a blank canvas, if you will. We are thrust into existence first, and from there, it is up to us to create our own essence, our own purpose. This may seem daunting, but it also opens up a world of possibilities. It's like being an artist given a blank canvas and an array of paints limited only by your own creativity. Key figures in this branch of nihilism include philosophers Jean-Paul Sartre and Albert Camus, who challenged us to craft our own meaning in a world that offers none. On the other hand, moral nihilism takes a critical stance on the concept of morality itself. It denies the existence of objective moral values or truths. Instead, it sees everything as relative, contingent on individual perspectives or societal constructs. Imagine standing on a hilltop and looking down at a city. Each building, each street, each person going about their day. They all have their own perspective, their own interpretation of what is right and wrong. This is the heart of moral nihilism. Friedrich Nietzsche a prominent figure in this school of thought critiqued the established morality of his time, arguing that it was a construct rather than an objective truth. While these philosophies may seem dark or pessimistic to some, they can also be seen as liberating. Existential nihilism gives us the freedom to define our own purpose, while moral nihilism challenges us to question and define our own values. The world may not offer inherent meaning, but that doesn't mean we can't create our own. While existential nihilism focuses on the creation of purpose, moral nihilism critiques the very foundation of morality. Both, however, invite us to question, to ponder, and above all, to think for ourselves. Beyond the existential and moral realms, nihilism extends its reach to knowledge and the cosmos. Delving into the third form, we encounter epistemological nihilism. This branch of nihilism rather than focusing on life's meaning or morality, targets our very understanding of the world. It questions the possibility or even the concept of obtaining objective knowledge. Can we ever truly know anything? This might sound like a paradox, but in the realm of philosophy, it's a valid probe. Epistemological nihilism pushes us to question every belief, every piece of knowledge we hold dear. 
It encourages skepticism and critical thinking and posits that no belief, including those on meaning or purpose, can be definitively proven. It's like a constant philosophical echo of Socrates' famous assertion, all I know is that I know nothing. Next, we find ourselves staring into the abyss of cosmic nihilism. This viewpoint doesn't just render our lives devoid of inherent meaning or purpose, but it emphasizes our insignificance in the grand scheme of the universe. Picture it, humanity, just another species on a pale blue dot, floating in the vast expanse of cosmos, a cosmos that doesn't care for or about us. It's humbling, isn't it? Cosmic nihilism forces us to confront the uncomfortable truth of our relative insignificance in the universe. Yet in both these forms of nihilism, there's a strange kind of liberation. In epistemological nihilism, we're free to question, to probe, to engage in critical thinking without boundaries. In cosmic nihilism, we're free from the pressure of cosmic significance, free to carve out our own meaning in a universe that's indifferent to our existence. As we question the nature of knowledge and our place in the cosmos, nihilism prompts us to confront uncomfortable truths. It's not necessarily a bleak or pessimistic viewpoint. Rather, it's a startlingly honest one, offering a philosophical lens through which we can examine our beliefs, our knowledge, and our place in the universe. A nihilist's view of the world may seem bleak, but it's not necessarily pessimistic or hedonistic. Indeed, embracing nihilism can be a profound and enlightening experience. It's an exploration into existential, moral, epistemological, and cosmic realms, each with its own emphasis, each questioning and challenging established norms. Existential nihilism, for instance, posits that we find ourselves in a world devoid of inherent meaning, leaving us to carve our own paths. Moral nihilism, on the other hand, dismisses objective moral truths, urging us to craft our own ethical frameworks. Epistemological nihilism, meanwhile, pushes the boundaries of skepticism, questioning the very possibility of achieving definitive knowledge. Lastly, cosmic nihilism underscores our insignificance in the grandeur of the universe, yet it doesn't rob us of our personal importance. It's crucial to remember that nihilism isn't a prescription for despair, nor is it indicative of a mental health issue. It's a personal philosophy, a critical interrogation of existence. Nihilism, in its many forms, is a philosophical journey into the heart of existence, a journey that each individual must embark on in their own way.